OpenAI recently released their latest chatbot, ChatGPT3, for open use on the web, and people have been losing their minds over it. Some people are saying this makes programmers obsolete, and some people are saying the future is here, or that this technology is mind-blowing, unlike anything we've ever seen before. And me being a good scientist, I found myself naturally a little bit skeptical, but also excited, uh, until I did my own research. I have hundreds of hours on my channel where I've built complex, complex complicated, in-depth Python games and done tons of science and technology tutorials on a variety of concepts. And if this chatbot is really able to do what I do with a simple prompt, then it might be time for me to step up my game because maybe we really are close to being replaced. And just so you have my opinion and my findings right off the bat and you don't have to wait till the very end, I was genuinely impressed with what the tool came up with. It is absolutely an unbelievable piece of technology. Kudos to the OpenAI team that created it. But I will also say that the reactions are a bit of an overreaction. There's no way that what I saw in my personal experience with it so far comes anywhere close to replacing programmers who are capable of creating complicated, in-depth, creative programs. However, basically my biggest goal on this YouTube channel is to try to make STEM concepts seem more approachable to a wider audience, lower the barrier to entry into the STEM world for people, and I do think that this OpenAI chatbot could help people there. So overall, absolutely gets a thumbs up from me. This is a great tool. But I was determined to see how close to replaceable I really am. So I set the chatbot against some of my biggest and most successful projects that I've done on the channel so far. And here's what we came up with. It's pretty interesting. I started with a recent project that I put a ton of time and effort into. Pac-Man. And my version of Pac-Man is an almost perfect rebuild of level one of the classic game. I had complete collision detecting, scoring, ghost algorithms, player movement, everything you would need to call it a complete game. And I was honestly pretty worried when I asked ChatGPT to make me a version of Pac-Man because all in all, I had probably spent over 20 hours building, designing, tweaking, refining, recording, editing, uploading this project. And if ChatGPT in just a couple of seconds gets essentially what I made, then we might be in some real trouble. What it came up with is still impressive for an AI. I can say overall as a programmer, it was pretty crappy. Fortunately for me, what it came up with was not close to a fully built out uh, version of Pac-Man. The basic mechanic of having a little player there was there as just this little yellow circle and you are able to move them, although a little too fast, in all the directions. And there is a ghost ready to be on the screen, but if it hits the player, it doesn't really do anything. By default, there's no point system or walls or collision detection really built in. So while I was still genuinely impressed with what it came up with so quickly as a baseline, I can safely say this is not close to replacing a programmer. Its biggest advantage would be maybe be getting you a starting point on something where you didn't really know how to start a project. You could give it this prompt and maybe it would give you the first few steps, but there's still a lot of work you're gonna need to be able to do on top of this to get to what we got, which I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but I feel like I can safely say after this test, Lamaster Tech 1, ChatGPT, still zero. Now is probably a good time to mention that all the tutorials that I talk about in this video, as well as the code that both Chat GPT made and the code that I've made are all going to be available on uh, GitHub as well as linked in the comments below. So be sure to check those out if you want to dive deeper into any of these projects. So the next project I decided to test ChatGPT against was a video that changed the whole direction of my channel for me. As a musician and a programmer, I spent a lot of time thinking what a cool way to combine those two worlds would be. And ultimately, I came up with a drum kit slash beat maker software where you'd have some very common percussion instruments and you could set your own recurring beat. I spent an enormous amount of time thinking of this project, developing it, building it, showcasing the tutorial and everything and it was actually cool enough unique enough that the amazing tech giant YouTube channel of freecodecamp.org featured my project on their channel so I got a ton of growth and a ton of exposure from that video and so it was really a big deal for me and I still think it's one of the coolest projects I've built to date and I'm extremely proud of this video so I wanted to see what ChatGPT would come up with if I said hey make me a drum 
kit, uh, playable drum kit software. And honestly, the results were pretty impressive. While in the end, there's no doubt that my project had tons of more features and really a better user experience and user interface, I just gave it a simple prompt to make me a playable drum kit in Python. And literally in like two and a half seconds, it spat out a project that would let me play the snare, the hi-hat, or the kick drum, which are the three most common drums on a drum kit, using the Q, W, and E buttons. And the only thing I had to provide were the sound files, which I already had because I already made a drum kit project. And so just by opening up the ChatGPT's version of the program and mapping it to my sound files, I was able to play a drum kit with uh, Q, W, and E. And so while I'm not necessarily taking a loss for this, I will say my expectations of what it would be able to come up with were pretty low. I'm still very proud of the project that I built and I think uh, it's a fun project for any musician, programmer, hybrid, but I will absolutely give the win to ChatGPT on this one because my expectations were pretty low and it exceeded all of them. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my scoring or if you think maybe I've got it a little bit backwards, as well as what you thought of the ChatGPT's drum kit. Did you think that was cool or honestly not that impressive? Now for a tiebreaker and a final challenge to sort of settle this, I wanted to go with the game Doodle Jump. This was because it's a classic iOS app, it's something everyone recognizes, and it was one of my earlier Pygame tutorials, so I've become a much better programmer since I rolled that tutorial out. And there was really only one game mechanic, right? It's bounce from platform to platform, try not to fall. That's more or less all I was hoping to get out of ChatGPT. I felt like with Pac-Man and the drum kit, I had asked it to do projects that there were really a lot of variation to. So one, I felt like it was one of my less complicated projects, and two, I felt like it was a simple ask. And so if this ChatGPT thing is really close to uh, replacing programmers, I thought this would be a good test for it. And to be honest, I ended up a little bit surprised by what we actually got from ChatGPT. It was, to me, the least impressive of the three projects I asked it to build. Initially, it only asked you to provide like an image for the platform and an image for the player. And I went ahead and did that, and I made sure the scaling made sense for the scope of the game it spat out, because that's not on the chatbot to know how to do. But even after that, there was essentially no player mechanic to move left or right. You weren't even really able to jump. It just dropped you until you hit a platform, and then you're kind of stuck there. And so you still have the core concept, I suppose, that's fairly close, but overall it just felt a little bit buggy. And I actually think if I was a beginner, beginner programmer and I'd seen these three projects, this would be the hardest one for me to sort of build off of and understand what was going on and pick up and learn from and expand upon. So it sort of reinforced the uh, feeling I had been getting the whole time I was using it, which is while this tool is an amazing starting point and it's going to help a lot of people uh, create a lot of cool things, it is not there yet as a full-blown developer uh, AI software, which is genuinely really good for you and me because it means we still have a chance of finding a job and our skill set is still needed. Uh, so overall with Doodle Jump, I absolutely am comfortable giving that a Lamaster Tech 2. Chat GPT won. It was a well fought battle. Just as a quick summary of my thoughts, uh, OpenAI has given us this amazing tool that it extends way beyond just STEM and programming, uh, the applications for just having conversation, interesting conversation. It can create music and poetry that is more or less original. I mean, it is sort of generic, I played around with that as well, but there's no doubt the tool is unbelievably cool. It's something you have to go and you have to mess around with. I found it super useful, um, really interesting stuff to look into, and it's nuts that this thing is not sentient. Or is it? And as for me and my channel, I try to make entertaining and educational content revolving around all things STEM. I try to roll out new content every single week. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who leaves likes on the videos, comments, subscribes to the channel. Those sorts of things help me out a ton. A special shout out to Dale T, my first Patreon supporter. You all helped me grow and expand the channel so much in the past year, year and a half of making videos. I'm excited to see where we go in 2023. I'm always interested in hearing what I can do to make it better and what you'd be interested in seeing more of on the channel in the future, so be sure to let me know about that in the comments below as well. And as always, thanks for watching, good luck with your projects, and until next time, bye.